Hello. Today's episode number 109 of the Professor Slots podcast discusses more on can you guess who controls slot machine odds. Plus, in this episode, I'll be covering the current state of slot machine casino gambling in the great U.S. state of Virginia. Thank you for joining me for the Professor Slots podcast show. I'm John Friedel, and this is the podcast about slot machine casino gambling. It is where I provide knowledge, insights, and tools for helping you improve your slot machine gambling performance. In case you missed it, on my last episode, I went over more on my winning slot strategy number seven, win, walk away, return later, from my weekly live Q&A session on YouTube. Further, I reviewed Vermont slot machine casino gambling in 2020. I hope you enjoyed listening listening to my last episode as much as I enjoyed making it for you. Remember to visit professorslots.com slash subscribe to get my free report revealing the top seven online resources for improving your gambling performance, including the one I've used as a top tier slot machine casino gambler. Here's the audio recording of my latest live stream Q&A session. Hello, slots enthusiasts. How are you? My name is John Friedel. Welcome to Professor Slots, a channel that helps you master casino slots so you can win your way to success. It's great to see you all here again for another Professor Slots podcast episode and live stream. Uh, And um, uh, just making sure I had good audio. Thanks, Chuck. Uh, uh, If you're with us live, be sure to, like Chuck is, uh, be sure to say hello uh, and many others um, and and ask your slots related questions. I'll get to those, get to those later in the show. Uh, Today, we're going to be diving into more on can you guess who controls slot machine odds? Uh, Who can, um, excellent. Uh, So who controls slot machine odds of winning is a popular question amongst slots enthusiasts to which I thought you would appreciate an answer. My last encounter with the general question uh, was during the Q&A segment of Recreational um, Gambling Podcast, episode number 634. Can you believe it? 634 from Five Hundy by Midnight. Uh, this gambling podcast is hosted by uh, Tim and Michelle. Uh, it's, I think, the longest uh, lasting uh, recreational gambling podcast. It's all about Las Vegas. So uh, not particularly slots oriented. There aren't any. Um, they might occasionally have something, but they're not uh, uh None of them are about that. I think um, another show that I like, uh, uh, You Can Bet on That uh, by uh, Mark and Dr. Mike, a uh, great couple of guys, uh, spent some time with them uh, at Foxwoods. They, um, uh, they're, they're Dr. Mike's father. Uh, is um, in, a, in a wheelchair, um, motorized, and and he loves slots. But other than that, they talk about him sometimes. Otherwise, they're they're just you know, this is the podcast on slot machine casino gambling. Um, Right. So my last encounter with this question that we're talking about today was actually a call in on 500 by midnight episode 634 from I think about a year ago. Um, They had a question from David, which was when a new themed penny slot debuts, what is the typical hold percentage? Does it vary by machine casino or both? Um, Tim and Michelle, uh, uh, of the co-host for that, um, for five hundred by midnight, uh, answered the question well, but, uh, somewhat briefly, uh, nice here. Excellent. Uh, uh, and I'm sure my own audience would like the answer too. So I'm providing a few more details as well as a more general answer with a bit of the why of, of it all. If you've seen my 20 minute video on this topic from earlier this year is really one of my first videos that weren't about my states, uh, the state videos that I make um, that I've kind of taken off YouTube and just put it in my website uh, that just clutter things up. Um, And uh, so this came out in, I think, the first week in January 2020 uh, this year. And uh, this is my first real video, more or less. And uh, it it's, you know, we, we, we didn't have a live session on it, um, uh, before didn't really go over it before. So I wanted to make sure I covered it here. If you've seen that video, you'll find more content, um, uh, here and we'll get into a little more of the details as, as usual. Um, so if you're following my live streams, you'll also see, uh, um, start to see how everything we've been talking about lately, um, here comes together, uh, because of this question, it answers, establishes the 
underpinnings for why my slots winning strategies work. Uh, to answer today's question, I'll need to delve into uh, something I've learned you guys don't like much of. Um, we'll need to dive into a bit of the recent history, the slots history, to explain how odds are set in older style standalone slot machines using a random number generator. RNG. Uh, this uh, way is how many people incorrectly believe the odds are currently set on all slot machines. Um, you know better, but not everyone does. Uh, we'll come back, but we'll come back to that in a moment. Um, uh, lots of lots of icons showing up in the live chat. They're, they're distracting me. <laughs> um, as usual, I'm easily distracted, as you know. So, however. Um, <clears throat> Uh, starting around 2008, uh, a lot changed with setting slot machine odds. These odds are due to the emergence of new gaming technologies, not only in slot machines, but also with the development of casino operating software. Both provide casinos with an increased operating efficiency and therefore uh, low operating costs. Uh, and uh, Nye has some rainbows that he's sharing. So I, I, this new software that I have has a bunch of features and I haven't really got to use it too much, but you can see uh, uh, Nye's uh, comment now on the screen. So let me hide that again. Uh, looking forward to testing out some of these other features if we get to them. But um, so both, uh, so these, uh, these new technologies, uh, including casino operating system software, uh, provide casinos with an increased effic operating efficiency and therefore lower operating costs. With so many more people visiting casinos in the last decade and with their profit margins, margins getting smaller every year, casino operators find they cannot afford to ignore opportunities of new technologies. And nothing is truer than... Uh, about that statement than, than, than adjusting the odds of winning. Uh, the second driver, partly because of the second driver, the second driver for this change to how slot machines are controlled is due to the ongoing developments and statutory regulations for gaming jurisdictions. In the U.S., these gaming jurisdictions are the states, territories, or our single federal district that legally allow gaming. In essence, casino operators have to follow the gaming regulations for their jurisdiction wherein they are located. These gaming jurisdictions often include laws which place an upper and lower limit on the payback return for slot machines, uh, the theoretical payout. Um, uh, and um, so to not lose their gaming license or to otherwise get in big trouble with gaming control authorities, casino operators must remain in compliance with these legal gaming regulations. Um, note that the cas commercial casinos have to comply to gaming regulations as set by the U.S. state, territory, or federal district they are located in. Native American tribal casinos also have to comply with their own set of gaming requirements, which are usually not based on state law. Rather, these are defined by negotiation between uh, the federally recognized tribe and the state within which they are located by carefully crafting a tribal state gaming compact ultimately approved by the U.S. Department of Interior. So within this overall context, who controls slot machine odds? At a high level, uh, gaming regulators, gaming regulators uh, determine the legal limits, if any, for payout returns, for p theoretical payouts uh, on slot machines accom accom uh, accomplished by state law or negotiated compacts and usually not changed, usually not changed for a decade, if ever, um, if that often. Casino operators are often but not always required to provide weekly or monthly reports on, on actual payout returns to show their gaming authority that they are compliant. Sometimes, depending on each gaming jurisdiction, the State Gaming Commission shares these statistical reports to the, with the public. But going further, uh, these regular reports sometimes break down uh, these actual returns uh, by casino, table games, slot machines, gaming machines, sometimes even by denomination of slot machines within a specific casino, or even if the machine has a progressive jackpot, what is done is very specific to the gaming jurisdiction where the casino is located. 
given all this variability of what is or is not done within a U.S. gaming jurisdiction, I've created an online resource, an online series of posts for my audience of slots enthusiasts for you. Uh, it's meant to help you navigate the dynamic environment of state-specific gaming regulations. I update each one uh, after about 13 months, uh, 56 uh, different articles, one per week. So it's about 13 months. And then, you know, after a year, we see what happens at, in that state and I update it. So for more information on your specific state, territory, or federal district of interest, see my online resource at professorslots.com slash online dash resource. I'll put that link in the description for this video, as well as on the podcast show notes. So at uh, just so you understand the structure in which we're answering this question. So at a high level, gaming regulators control the odds of winning of slot machines using the legal requirements for payout, theoretical payout uh, percentages. Sometimes, however, these state-specific gaming regulators do not set these limits on theoretical payouts. I know those people who don't have theoretical payouts, um, uh, you know, wish they did. Uh, as a form of protection. And, but I, I, I have to say, um, you know, some of these states have deliberately not set these legal limits. And I'm, uh, and I'm not, I'm fairly certain it doesn't matter uh, under most circumstances. Unfortunately, during a pandemic, it might matter. <laughs> so, um, uh, you know, with, with casinos having closed for what, two, three months and trying to make the money back, uh, the legal limit had, would prevent them from excesses, shall we say? Um, maybe. Uh, but again, uh, well, let me get into it. Um, so when this happens, somewhat obviously casino operators do not have a legal requirement for setting payout, theoretical payouts. However, to remain open and not close due to lack of customers, they must still be careful to not set their theoretical payouts too low even without a limit, even with, with a limit or without a limit, because if they drop it too low, it has an obvious effect on the happiness of people who are playing slots in that casino. We've talked about this many times. What's going on the, at the beginning of 2020 in Oklahoma before the pandemic uh, with that disagreement with the governor uh, and, you know, just the way that payouts were just dropped to the floor. We don't know what the actual number was because Oklahoma doesn't pay, doesn't provide that return, that return statistics. But the way everybody was walking around, all the you know players are complaining to me saying, what is going on? It's terrible here. And um, then a few months later, it all came back. And, and it's just a business decision by the tribes, uh, even without a theoretical payout limit. Um, so that most gaming regulations set a low payout, low limit on payout, theoretical payouts in which casino operators um, deliberately st stay well above. To do so just makes good business sense. Uh, if they don't do that, if they don't keep an eye on their business and the happiness of their uh, players, they could lose them. They worked hard to get them and they could lose them. Now, you know, I've tried to think of reasons why we've seen it happen. We've seen, you know, theoretical payouts drop based on happiness of players and something, and there's a circumstance taking place, you know, if it, like uh, Oklahoma tribal casinos had an argument with the governor about uh, changes and renewing and updating the gaming compacts for uh, tribes in Oklahoma. And so there might've been a justification for that, but they've lost a serious amount of goodwill uh, you know, some of those people who left in disgust from those casinos didn't return. Um, and that's long term, you know, money for the casino lost, out, walked out the door. And so, um, you know, we want the businesses to understand that. But sometimes during a pandemic, you know, during that in you know, Oklahoma, that's that's worldwide. Right. A lot of places closed for, closed for months um, and that matters to the bottom line of casinos. Uh, but there's also other things. And so when they reopened, did they lower them? You know, the smart ones didn't. The smart ones, uh, well, they they lowered it in like a nice way. Right. They lowered uh, they they made a lot of wins for everybody. Uh, yeah, but they lowered the amount of the wins. And, you know, whenever I win anything, it makes me happier. You know, well, last week, this was, you know, last year, this was a $2,000 jackpot. And now it's only like $300. Eh, 
winning, winning's winning, you know, uh, you, you might still be, you know, it's, it's a loss, but uh, it's not the same thing as, you know, going in and saying, well, I just spent 300 bucks on a slot machine and nothing happened. Nothing happened. I didn't win a quarter, you know, and, and that feels terrible. And that's the sort of thing that uh, the smart casinos right now, I, I, I guess I'm calling them smart and stupid, <laughs> right? Uh, the smart casinos uh, know that, you know, we're happy with winning and for a lot of us, right? Uh, and it certainly if we don't win, we do get, uh, um, you know, don't win anything at all. We get much more upset. Okay. Um, so, uh, right. So let's talk about how odds are physically set. Uh, the random, and we, we need to delve into a little bit of history and move forward. Uh, I, I, I'm seeing some very interesting chat going on, but um, I wanted to take a break in a, a few more minutes uh, so that we can uh, uh, then then go through the questions. Uh, but I, that certainly some of these things look very interesting. Um, so, uh, but the random number generator, RNG, was developed uh, for slot machines by... Bali Technologies, which was a behemoth corporation um, for, what, four decades? You know, they started with pinball machines, uh, and then they moved into slot machines, and they became the primary slot machine provider. And they de developed all this technology, uh, even, you know, switching over to be being from purely mechanical to being electromechanical, you know, having lights, sounds, you know, before that they didn't have them. Uh, so, um, but they invented the random number generator. Uh, there's a patent available on Google patents and I don't have the number memorized. It's four million something, but uh, you can look it up and, uh, and I have the reference elsewhere, uh, but um, they invented random number generators in 1984. After about a decade later, most slot machines had, they had to install them, right? It's not instantaneous. They had to switch over. Uh, so they worked out the bugs and got it into all slot machines, uh, which, which technically allowed easily adjustable odds of winning, right? Uh, if you have to switch out a gear, make it a different diameter, you know, that's too simple to explain this, but, um, you know, handcrafted slot machines, even manufactured on an assembly line, uh, were not easily adjustable, not not really at all. Um, and uh, so this RNG allowed for the possibility of easily changing the odds. Uh, so beforehand, the odds uh, were set by entirely mechanical manner. Um, and that worked well for decades until the technical development of slot machines began to cause problems. Uh, so imagine a time on some of these antiques, maybe you have an antique, imagine a time when uh, you couldn't change how many credits you bet. You had one pay line, maybe, you know, at right there towards the end, two you know, three, but that was it. And that's where they started hitting a limit because it all became more and more physical mechanisms of determining odds. Uh, and it began to be, you know, too much going on. Was it reliable functioning? You know, uh, did it, did it do the job? And then the, the randomness started to be not so random. You know, they, they took shortcuts on some of the mechanics, the gears and levers and whatnot. Um, and it began to be not so random anymore because uh, it, it mechanically, it's quite the marvel to open it up and look at all those gears. Um, so uh, slot enthusiasts, you know, slot manufacturers listen to people who play and they know what players want. And one of the things was, being able to bet more credits, you know, instead of just one credit, five credits, three credits, all that was just loved by slots enthusiasts. And so, um, you know, one pay line, how many pay lines did you last play on your, uh, on your last um, uh, penny slot machine? I think I saw one once that had 850 credits. 
<laughs> Mechanically, that ain't, that ain't happening. <laughs> but electronically, yes, um, with a random number gener generator. So, the, so really, what I'm saying here is, uh, they went from in they increased their credits and they pay lines, uh, and that also led to higher jackpots. And all that was a result of the random number generator. It removed a technological barrier, uh, the limit of mechanical devices and gears and levers. So all these developments led to odds of winning being needed for many more possible outcomes, which mechanical devices for determining the odds of winning began to not be able to handle. In fact, the mechanical devices began to fall behind and, and everything became less and less random in nature. So uh, normally at this point, whenever we talk about random, randomness, I might say, well, randomness is quite interesting. And I, and I, I will forego this in this instance. Um, uh, there's something called pseudo random number generators. Uh, and I just love talking about this topic because I think it's just wonderful, but maybe you don't want to hear me talk about it. So, so um, you can get uh, closer to random, uh, the better you do at it. And this allowed them to go back to being a lot more random than they were just mechanically. The RNG allowed them to do that. Um, there's still limits. Um, so moving away from our brief sortie into the philosophy of randomness, <laughs> the invention of the RNG uh, solved for the slot machine manufacturers a limitation of mechanical devices for determining, ran for determining randomness in slot machines, but it created another problem. With adjustable odds of winning via electronic random number generators, casinos would need a large workforce to do that adjusting, right? So, so that's what the casinos did. They built and trained, put together a workforce of slot mechanics to adjust the odds of winning on their new slot machines to meet their desired performance metrics. However, the, the size of this workforce would increase tremendously depending on how many times the odds of winning were adjusted. Uh, it might, you know, it ended up being something like a, a According to my kind of keeping an eye on things at the casinos that I, I went to back in 2004, it seemed like they changed the odds on most slot machines over a period of about two weeks, maybe seven days. It, it, it was hard to pinpoint, but I uh, did my little bit of research in 2004 at Prairie Meadows, and I saw it was somewhere between I, – I sat down on a machine, the odds stayed the same for six days. And on the seventh day, it changed. It was very obvious. So I know it's at least seven days, and I think it might go as high as two weeks because how many days before that was it set that way? So uh, that's that was good. That was good at the time. Um, so uh, for the most part, uh, you'll see these. Um, so the size... You can still see this crew of slots mechanics at Riverboat Casinos. I, I saw, uh, what was it, Harris, North Kansas City earlier this year. I don't think it was the end of last year. I think it was earlier this year. Um, February, so maybe. I have to remember the exact date, but it was either that or, or just uh, December uh, last year. In any case, they're, they're running around changing the odds on the slot machines because it's a Riverboat Casino and they weren't able to update. So I go into uh, detail about winning on slots uh, at older casinos in episode podcast episode number 21. Um, but since 2012 or so, newer casinos have been able to reduce this costly workforce. I mean, costly workforce, labor, labor costs, uh, uh, thanks to new casino, casino operating systems. These systems not only help casinos manage large promotional events with less overall issues, um, but they also allow them to remotely adjust the odds of winning on slot machines connected to the casino central computer. Of course, this connection to the casino central computer system is limited to a wired connection due to potential security concerns, sniffers and other things that, you know, experts can use, um, uh, as well as, you know, a Wi-Fi bandwidth limit. Why not just put the whole thing on Wi-Fi? Well, don't do that. So there's, you know, you want to be secure. They're required to be secure. So as a result, using a central computer in this matter is the only possible way if, and, you know, to do that is for have all the slot machines physically wired up. So doing so requires sufficient building infrastructure, such as um, clearance beneath floors and behind walls to allow for these many, many cable connections, even being efficient about it. So this is only practically possible in all new casinos being built 
as well as older casinos being heavily renovated. I've seen some of that here in Ohio. Um, if you're familiar with one of the racetracks that has slot machines, Belterra Park, um, it, it, the track kept on being flooded um, by the Ohio River. It's right next to the Ohio River outside of Cincinnati. Uh, and uh, uh, so they decided that they would um, elevate the track, which meant, um, you know, uh, heavy renovation. They had an old building for slot machines, part of the building that was there for slot machines, not the racing part. Uh, and they tore it down. And then they just said, you know, it would be a little easier to do all of this if we moved it down the road like a quarter mile. <laughs> so they moved the track down the road a quarter mile, a little further from the, not, not really further from the Ohio River, more like parallel to it, but it was a little higher elevation. And then with a bunch of soil, they carted in, they left the track, but they also built a whole new casino with the slot machines, brand new, 2013, opened, um, I think it was August that year. Uh, and uh, just before that, Horseshoe Cincinnati had opened in March 2013. So for a little while there, uh, Horseshoe didn't have any um, competition. All right. So uh, that is what's needed. When I talk about heavily renovated, I'm not saying somebody, you know, change the carpeting. Uh, you, you, this, these wires take a lot of room. Uh, so you just can't put them in. Uh, right. So they're going to the floor. Uh, more or less in behind the walls, et cetera. Um, so, uh, so wired connections from the slot machines had to go to a central computer, uh, which reduced, uh, allowed them to, to reduce their workforce of slot mechanics. Um, not only that, but they were able to have faster adjustment of casino performance metrics to daily, you know, from, from, you know, my research of seeing it was at least seven days, six days, seven days, um, minimum. But then how long before when I started my test had it not been changed? And I figured about two weeks. So somewhere between a week to two weeks, uh, to daily. Oh my goodness. You know, that is so valuable for the casino, you know, makes their job easier to meet the state requirements or the comp or gaming compact requirements, you know, and then since then, it, you know, becomes faster to with better computers. I mean, 2013, think about the kind of computers we had compared to now, you know, it's just better now, more RAM, more memory and all that, uh, faster bandwidth, you know, faster speeds. Um, so now they've gone from daily to even hourly updates. And this also satisfied customers uh, because it, they also were able to get rid of clipboards, right? To run, to run slot tournaments, right? To get rid of paper, on a lot of different things. So they could run events, promotional events better. Uh, and believe you me, I've been to the, some of the older ones and wow, you know, a lot of missed chances when you're using paper, right? So, uh, you know, I, yeah, just amazing. Uh, and so now I see some of these efficiently run, you know, casinos packed, they got this big promotional event. You've been to those, right? And 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 now it's all electronic. I mean, they still have problems sometimes, uh, not because electronics failed, but you know, for some reason, like they got twice the people, you know, than they expected, and it was still pushing the system. They still push these systems pretty hard, uh, or I should say, <laughs> I should say, we do. As slots players, we are responsible for driving business to the casinos. They are responding to our loving casinos and loving to play slot machines. And when they send us a $20, you know, flyer, I got one today for $26 from Miami Valley Gaming. And I'm just like, hmm, $26, I should go. <laughs> so, um, uh, you know, it, the population became trained to come in. And uh, so they responded with better technology in order to make the most of it um, and even maybe just to survive. And it's gotten to the point now, um, gotten to the point now where the only people that haven't switched, I mean, since I don't know if Horseshoe Cincinnati was the first one. I don't know if Belterra Park was the first one. Probably not. Uh, but... Uh, that's right about the time the technology became available from the slot machine manufacturers who make more than slot machines that make these casino operating systems and lottery systems as well. But, but um, this, this amazing uh, technology spread, you, you know, the casinos couldn't afford to not have it. Uh, it made things better for the customer. It reduced their labor force. 
uh, and all the costs associated with that. And then you have, um, uh, you know, then, then, then you had not, they didn't get rid of all the slot mechanics because of course you still have filters and fans and other things that, you know, maintenance to be done, but a uh, uh, significant number of people uh, were reduced. And also, you know, that was kind of minor compared to being able to go from every week to two weeks and adjusting your, your uh, theoretical payouts to daily at first, you know, that's what they signed up for. And then it moved more closer to hourly. Uh, and right there, it's, you know, we talk about this in engineering sometimes about um, disruptive technologies. We talk about, uh, you know, you can't afford not to get it. If you've got a way to do something and it's twice as good as the way it's currently being done, you're not going to, you're not going to make the change. You're not going to retrain the people and, 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 and do all the work. But if you, if you find a new technology, new, new something to replace what exists and it's 10 times better, that was a, you know, that was something my PhD provided, uh, was a technology that was just like 10 minimum, 12 times better than what was, you can't, you can't not do it. And so that's what this technology was, this, this, this uh, central server. Um, yeah. So uh, to get closer to the answer to this question, uh, we'll next discuss how the legal limits of payout returns, uh, theoretical payouts, and are, are set on actual machines. Why? Because slot machines can be categorized by how their odds are set and how those odds are physically set will tell us who really controls them? So I'm going to take a moment, go over, check with the live chat. Uh, saw a bunch of things scrolling past here, uh, and I will see what is going on. Um, I would take a short break about halfway through the show. So, um, okay. Uh, yep. Hanging with Linda says, good subject. Thank you. Uh, I actually have some good numbers uh, on my website for, for this topic. And I thought, you know, we haven't talked about it here, so we should. Um, and it just, it, it matters to everything. Uh, Nye is here. I'm so glad not to be confused about how to, how to uh, uh, pronounce your name, Nye. Nye is saying hello for, uh, aloha from Hawaii. Um, and I will, um, I think I can do this now. Uh, I will share with you. Uh, so if you're watching the video and not on the podcast, and you can now see the little hand gesture uh, <laughs> icon from Nye. Hi, Nye. Um, and I'll hide that again. Uh, uh, yep. Um, and yeah, Linda, hanging up with Linda has a slots channel. Um, she's been really courteous, and I don't mind saying uh, so. Uh, so Michael's here. Uh, he's in Denver. Carrie's here. Uh, <laughs> it's all right, Gary. Why be different? Everybody else is late too. Um, uh, oh, uh, Linda's got more icons. Um, maybe I can share those too. Uh, yeah. Um, so I'll, I'll put this up. So hanging with Linda is here. She has her own show. Check her out. Um, and, uh, she has also access to, is that a, is that first icon a slot machine? It looks like a slot machine. <laughs> and then there's dice, uh, or at least the reels on a slot machine. Um, uh, and, uh, uh, let's see, uh, Chip says, uh, John, the Ohio State Gaming Commission, as you know, has an excellent monthly report on Ohio casinos, very informative and nicely laid out. Uh, they have a fairly good one. Um, that is true. Uh, I, I particularly enjoy, and this is not something I've seen anywhere else. I, I know that crimes are reported uh, at state uh, police departments, um, but casino crimes are reported on the Ohio Gaming Commission site, at least for the casinos, not so much for the slot parlors. Um, and I'll talk about those in a minute, but how many of each, because it's a, an example for the rest of us. But um, they, they all say how many assaults, how many cheaters, how many, um, you know, robberies uh, underage. Uh, it's kind of interesting to look through it. And, you know, one of the things I've come to realize is that uh, it's kind of about the same, you know, more or less across the country. Uh, I don't know about internationally. So, you know, if you want to get an idea how much crime is taking place, I know it's more in, what is it, Cleveland than 
Cincinnati, but still you get an idea of, of the, the sort of like the bracket of uh, how much is going on, how much crime is going on. And I, I found that very informative. So as I've gone through every state's gaming uh, uh, regulations, some of which have none, you know, there's a line in the constitution, state constitution that says no prohibited, right? And, and but there's others that have information that applies, you know, across the United States. And I thought the level of crime at casinos from Ohio was pretty darn fascinating, but maybe that's just me. Uh, Hanging with Linda has another comment. Um, oh, uh, so she used to work in a casino in Arizona. Uh, that's up on the screen now. And uh, she saw uh, those reports. Right. I don't remember if um, Arizona, uh, off the top of my head, if Arizona uh, provides reports I don't remember. Um, have to look it up. Professorslots.com slash AZ will take you right there. And down in the payout return section, just above summary, um, you'll you'll find uh, whether or not they have theoretical payouts, uh, limits, uh, and if they have return statistics available and links to either. So uh, Jan says uh, she uh, likes Louisiana's reports, uh, very detailed. Uh, yes, uh, uh, I think those are by region. Uh, within the state. So it's not by every casino. It's just like four or five casinos within four regions of the state. Uh, get to know your state. I mean, this is one of the things I say at the beginning of my state by state videos, which you'll find on your state's website, uh, you know, professorslots.com slash, and then the two letter uh, postal designation. Um, and that's where I put the videos really the only place you can find them anymore. Um, uh, they're on YouTube, but they're kind of hidden uh, and unlisted as they say. Uh, and if you, you know, one of the first things I say there is get to know, get to know your states, uh, uh, game, you know, gaming jurisdictions as an easy way to to better, uh, you know, improve your own slots gambling performance. Uh, sure, they may be like Oklahoma and they don't have, <laughs> they don't have squat, you know, they don't have anything. <laughs> and, you know, uh, but that doesn't mean that, you know, maybe you you, you live in Texas and you could go to Air, Oklahoma, but you could go to Louisiana and one has, you know, Louisiana's, Louisiana has reports and Oklahoma doesn't. And if you have a choice, well, this is how you decide. This is how you assess what your options are. And I had to, you know, nobody really does this. I think they, uh, there's some sites that will say, well, what's the biggest casino in the state? You know, and maybe there would be a list, but there wasn't really anything about, uh, so what does the state reg say? And what does this say? What does that say? So I, you know, it took me 12, 13 months to get through all every state. And then I did what I've already done it. I just finished, um, and I haven't posted the last one. I still have to post Wyoming. They're alphabetical, uh, but that's Tuesday. And that'll be the third time through. And I've got, I've dug in as far as I think you will be interested in dig, my digging in. And I've got to add maybe some better graphics and some uh, reorder things and, and just emphasize a few things going forward. Watch for changes every year. But it took me a, a year's. Uh, to put together that resource and it's there for you. So you can figure it all yourself. Of course you can. But um, from my perspective of having gone through every state, which I don't expect you to do, um, you know, I, 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 I now see what's unusual about a state because I know what every state provides. Uh, and I try to point that out. And so I think these are valuable to you. So um, uh, Michael says, do you know states casinos with election issues? Besides Colorado, oh, uh, that, see, that's the thing. Um, I created uh, Facebook pages for each state because I don't live in Colorado, and you know the locals will know something. And if I were to check, you know, it's it's hard for me to know sudden events. You know, I update each of these articles about once a year, 13 months, unless I hear something, in which case I'll, I'll add it. Um, but it, so for the local events, the, you know, next 46 days or, 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 or something, that's why I built, built the, um, put together the, offered the Facebook groups. Uh, so professorslots.com slash FB for Facebook, FB, uh, and then the two letter designation. And that'll take you right to that state. And that's where that should be discussed. Um, because 
that sort of thing happens. And I can't wait a year. You can't wait a year, 13 months, you know, Colorado would be sooner because it's towards the top of the alphabet. But um, that's where, you know, boots on the ground. Hey, have you heard this? Let's go to the casino together. That's what the Facebook groups are for. So I'm just trying to give you an understanding of, you know, I've got a book on Amazon. I did the uh, soft cover. You can get the ebook. You can get the PDF from my website. You, I did the audio book. You know, I, I'm, I'm not selling this to you. Now I'm saying if you want resources, resources are available. The podcast, if you listen to podcasts, the website, if you go to websites, the uh, Amazon for videos, I, I'm really only been at that seriously this year and there's a lot to do uh, uh, and probably should have done it first um, to, given how, how popular, how popular it is. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, all that is there for you because I'm trying to be you know, helpful. So, no, I don't know about the uh, state's casinos election issues in Colorado. Uh, normally, I would, you know, one of the things you might find out about is if uh, gaming compacts were due, but I don't, there's a couple of uh, casinos, right? Mountain Ute. Yeah, I think that's how you pronounce it, U-T-E. Um, and it's a terrible pronunciation, for it, by the way, with vowels, um, uh, uh, as I've mentioned before. Um, but I think that's pronounced correctly. And um, maybe it's that. Maybe it's the commercial casinos in the, the frontier towns in Colorado. Interesting state. they got frontier towns. Um, in any case, uh, but a couple of tribal casinos as well. No, I don't. <laughs> uh, see... Okay, so uh, again, you know, if you have questions, ask them now. I'll come back to, uh, closer to the end. Uh, there's several more here. Um, I want to make sure I kind of cover them. Uh, talk amongst yourselves. Uh, Steve is here uh, from Green Bay, uh, Wisconsin. Um, uh, thank you, Linda, for, for saying, um, and I'll see if I can share this getting the hang of uh, just being comfortable um, with this. Uh, ah, there it is. Uh, hanging with Linda says, thumbs up everyone for John. Uh, yes, please. Um, wow, lots of questions. I've got uh, new people here too. Uh, since he's back, good to see you. Um, uh, Carrie is here. Uh, last night at uh, Kansas Star, they were announcing a lot of winners. Um, yeah, I've heard some things. Uh, Kansas Star, that is not in Kansas, right? That's Missouri. Um, uh, and, you know, there, there's there been uh, uh, some positive things going on lately. Uh, <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, that's right, Carrie. If you were, you know, as we've talked about in the past, she, she says, I should have been going around taking uh, notes, time and locations, right? That is one of the winning strategies uh, that you can see if that casino uses it. But uh, yes, machines and um, uh, machines and locations. Yes. Uh, time, time, machine, the date, the time, the machine, and then come back one week later and Start five minutes before, 10 minutes before and play through that time. And uh, you've got a better chance than usual of winning, particularly if the casino is set up that way. And it'll be really obvious, really fast. And it helps you sort of ch choose the slot machines that might be winners. And if it does work, if you find it does work um, uh, at that casino, you can't make the casino do it. It has to be something that they already do. You just have to figure out if they're doing it. Uh, if you can do that, then... Um, uh, you know, you're off and running. Uh, one person told me that I think it might've been, what state was it? One of these states, uh, they have a website where they posted all of the winners, the time and machine, or at least they had a picture of the machine, uh, all the winners, 20 of them for the month. And I'm, and, and he's like, so I guess I could, you know, come back in a month and do all those. And I'm like, no, come back next week. Find out what day of the week that was. Now you've got a hundred machines that you can play. It might be more than you're willing to spend, but you know, you look around again, like with the state, you have things that you can observe your casino. And I don't know all of them. I just know a 
a lot of them. Uh, we'll see how in five years if I know a lot of them. But I do know a lot of them. And if you want to try that sort of thing, you know, see what your casino has to offer. Um, do they have uh, return statistics by slot machine denomination uh, that tell you which machines pet were better odds last month or, or, you know, or consistently for several months? That's the thing you want to watch for, like Nevada. I mean, why wouldn't you look that stuff up? But it also does require a little bit of spreadsheet ability and, and some, you know, scanning through numbers. Uh, and not everybody loves to do that like me. Uh all right, so getting kind of close to the notes. I'm glad to have so many people here, 79 people. I don't think I've ever had this many people, um, uh, uh, 79 playbacks. Okay, um, uh, so 29 people. Huh. Uh, better than usual. Um, Jan says, it seems like the L.A. casinos, uh, Louisiana, you mean? I always get that confused. Um, right, so it seems like. Uh, the Louisiana computers uh, casinos tighten up the slots in late afternoon, especially during the week. Hey, that's an observation. If you're going to be in Los, uh, Louisiana, take note from what Jan is seeing when she goes there. Um, and hanging in with Linda says, same in uh, Southern California. Afternoons are the worst. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and Chuck's, Chuck is very focused. He's like, okay, so those are bad times. What are good times? Um how about 4.30 in the morning until 7 a.m., uh, 7 a.m. Chuck? Uh, we talked about that, right? Uh, uh, Steve says he tried the time and location last night uh, at one of your local casinos, and it didn't work out. Um, so you had a prior hand pay, uh, and uh, so you uh, went back to the same slot machine one week later and played to the same time. Uh, what was a week ago? See, that's... You got to be careful about that, okay? That's something I, I, I warn people about. What was a week ago? You know, was was it the usual, let's say it was Thursday night. Well, Thursday night might have been okay, but but Saturday was Derby Day, wasn't it? Or is that two weeks ago? You got to be careful that you don't pick a holiday and then assume one week later it's going to be the same casino conditions because it won't be unless it's also a holiday like Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve or Christmas Day and New Year's Day. Um, you know, those are similar. So um, but it's also quite possible that casino doesn't do it. You know, it, you run the test and you see. Uh Right. Um, hanging with Linda. Uh, all right. I think this is kind of getting discussion about <laughs> um, uh, how, how we're not early birds. Uh, Carrie says, seems I win more in Kansas Star from 1.30 to 4.30, but that really messes up the rest of the day for me. Yeah, yeah Chuck stays all night. He's told me that several times. And hanging with Linda says, uh, yes. Uh, there it is. For us, um, she's in Southern California. For us, we fi uh, feel gambling during meal times is the worst. Vegas in Southern California. Yep. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, Kansas uh, Kansas Star uh, is uh, south of Wichita. Okay. Yep. I had that wrong. Um all right. So it looks like we answered some of the questions. Uh, if you have more questions, do let me know. I'll get back to the topic. Uh, and um, so, uh, so slot machine types uh, based on how odds are set. Slot machines can be divided up into methods by which their odds of winning are set. Uh, these slot machine types include standalone, casino-specific progressives, uh, there's three different kinds of progressives, those that are within the casino, those are within multiple casinos by the same casino operator, and then there's statewide. I uh, didn't really go into things um, like megabucks, which might be nationwide, that sort of thing. Um, that's just one or two of those. Um, uh, the, the, then there's also two others, uh, uh, non-progressive types, which are remotely controlled on-site by the casino and remotely, remotely controlled off-site by gaming regulations, uh, very generally. Um, 
All right. Uh, so uh, moving away from live chat, and my, uh, uh, some of my statements had responses. So uh, standalone slot machines are those which are now most often found in riverboat casinos, but are technically slot machines, including within their cabinets, the ability to set and provide odds of winning with a random number generator. A workforce of slot mechanics adjusts the odds of winning periodically to as directed by the casino operator. In general, there is a limited number of settings available for these slot machines. YouTube videos are available from individuals who have personally purchased an older style standalone slot machine showing almost an antique, uh, showing how these odds are set. Uh, there are others that are a little more modern. Uh, for these video, for these videos I have viewed, there are six possible settings which could be entered after opening the slot machine door. Um, these these were videos uh, I, I looked at them in, in two thousand four ish. Uh, was it two thousand four? Might have been a little, couple years after that, but this was uh, nearly twenty years ago, and they weren't new at the time. These were not new slot machines, so this is uh, not, of course, anything you're going to see at the slot machine at at, at a casino, um, but you might purchase them uh, uh, still not quite and you know it's something from the 90s and antique probably not something more like the 70s um, although I have a book on 100 years of slot machine manufacturing and it was published in the 70s so it goes back to you know 1870 uh, on some of it and it's pretty fascinating uh, to see the changes but I think the 70s had some terrible artwork. <laughs> Just didn't care for it. Um, uh, but uh, um, so, but more recently, um, say 2009, my neighbor, um, you know, I live in Ohio. Uh, you can own a slot machine privately as long as you don't, um, you know, use it for gambling. Uh, and uh, my neighbor uh, bought one from 2009. He wanted to sell it to me, but I'm just like, you know, I can fill my whole house full of slot machines and I, you know, I, I'm not going to do that. Um, uh I'm interested in the newer stuff because that's what you guys play. But, you know, something from 2009, it's interesting to get the all the documentation, the booklet from the slot machine manufacturer. Uh, you know, it's more than a booklet. It's it's devices. It's it's a plastic sheet that is a program, a, a programming card, which if fed into the you put the um a slot machine into a particular mode uh, and you feed that into the ticket in ticket out um, and it'll accept that and it will provide authorization to reprogram the chip uh, and you know it's all all the you know I, I i was going through the screen options with my neighbor when he showed me all this and you know it's all right there you don't have an infinite number of settings uh, but that's in 2009 that's how you did it now it's just you know, no one's going to give that up. No casino is going to allow slot machine manufacturers to give that up. Uh, and uh, that, that that ability uh, just not going to happen. Um, and um, a slot machine manufacturer would go out of business trying to, if they did that sort of thing. So that's my response to some of the comments I've gotten um, uh, about about that feature. But uh, that feature is is what we're talking about here, you know. Uh, and who's doing that? Is it done remotely? Is it done on the standalone? So on the standalone, you know, it is adjusted. Uh, and as technology has developed in slot machines, that adjustment has changed from flipping six levers to a certain combination to now feeding in a clear plastic sheet that has some code on it that is read by the computer when it's in a certain mode. And then you can adjust the settings on a whole variety of different things uh, and then lock that setting in. Um, and that was, you know, 2009-ish. And now they've got, um, you know, whatever they've got. So, uh, but the standalone machines are only it's, I, I, I've gotten out there and I've gone to the different casinos at the end of last year, beginning of this year. And they're all, they're all remotely controlled. You know, all the things I used to see when they weren't remotely controlled, um, LED player interfaces, you know, the little red dots like you see outside of a bank. I don't know. It's still outside of the bank showing the temperature. You know, it's, it's that old style player card. Hello, John, you know, and it marches across the street uh, screen. Um, uh, that That's all gone. Uh, the only places that, and, you know, I was a little confused by Harris, but then, um, you know, I talked to somebody and the place hadn't been renovated and they couldn't renovate it because it was a hall under the floor, no place for the cables. And then I saw 
slot machine manufacturers, they, they have these little um, candles on the top of machines and they have three different colors uh, and the bottom one is white. And the white one isn't an alert. It is an indication that someone had opened the door. So I saw a gentleman uh, who worked for the casino, obviously a slot mechanic, move basically from one machine to the next machine to the next machine to the next machine. And after he was done, the red light, the, the, the white light came on. And I, I asked, what's going on? And, oh, they're adjusting the odds. You know, so that's about the only place these still are. And it's, you know, 2013 wasn't that long ago. 2014, 2015, and then now here it is five years later, and everything has just had sweeping changes across the nation. So uh, it used to be a little more common to find standalones, and now it's hard to find. Uh, except for you guys in Missouri and Iowa and a few other places, all they're start, starting to get away from that. Illinois, you know, riverboat casinos, right? It's kind of the Midwestern stuff. Um, let's see, Indiana. Um, so for more recently manufactured slot machines, uh, like I said, there's this ticket in and ticket out. Um, and I've seen this myself. So keep in mind that videos such as these are the general source of knowledge most people have about the internal workings of slot machines. Employees of slot machine manufacturers and casinos with access to these payout settings simply aren't sharing this information due to non-disclosure agreements and other legal legal restrictions, which could, would get them in, in pretty serious trouble if they were, were to share. So um, besides which accessing the control from the changing the odds of the slot machine is quite problematic. The slot machine is alarmed. Any tampering without official access, employee card, key, entry code, physical key are required to successfully open a slot machine without setting off all the alarms. And of course, the surveillance camera sees all. So discussing, um, you know, the progressive slot machines, I've kind of already gone over that in a prior uh, live stream uh, not too long ago, actually, uh, four weeks ago, I think it was when we talked about winning strategy two. that would have been, yeah, four or five weeks ago now. Um, for instance, um, you can have a, uh, so, so, so I won't go over progressive slot machines, Um Let's see, uh, and all new ones have it. Uh, I think I covered my notes here. Um, so let's talk a little bit about those that are controlled offsite. Um, uh, let's see, I'm gonna let's let's talk a little bit about um, uh, those that are controlled offsite. I got a question this morning when he saw my newsletter. Um, uh, and I mentioned that today we'll be talking about who controls the odds slot machines. Uh, and can you guess? And uh, he asked about tribal, he asked about video lottery terminals controlled by the state lottery. And a lot of the stuff that I've said is true. Okay. Uh, every state is different. And so Ohio happens to have casinos. I think it's four casinos. Yes, four casinos, seven racetracks with slot machines, the four casinos are controlled by the Ohio Gaming Commission, all right? Then they duplicated the rules, moved them over to the lottery uh, authority, state lottery, and those, the state lottery controls uh, uh, the, 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 the slot machines at tribal, at, at no, there's no tribals uh, in, in, in Ohio, but at the racetracks uh, and with slot machines and at the seven of those. So I, it, it appears they kind of match one to one. If one makes a change, the other makes a change between the State Gaming Commission and the lottery system. So I really consider it one system, but it is controlled offsite uh, uh, by the state lottery at the, at the slots powers, the racetracks, but not, you know, the casinos control it. Uh, the four casinos uh, instead of the Ohio Gaming Commission. So that's a little bit of a difference. Yet I've played at both and, you know, years and I've played at both. And obviously the casino has a lot of say in what the lottery system does because the stuff that we talk about, the winning slot strategies, this is where I found them, you know. And while every casino is a little bit different, um, it wasn't like it was impossible to win. It was, you know, other things were going on on my list of, of seven winning strategies. Uh, you know, the casinos had one, the, the, those that controlled by the, um, the uh, slots parlors with racetracks, racetracks controlled by the state lottery, um, you know, had others, but they all had something. Now, so I'm confident that every state that has video lottery terminals controlled by the state lottery um, you know, it all all has this option, all has the ability to control 
uh, what's going on and the casinos have a say. All except the state of Washington. That one, I, I've, I've gone over and over the state regulations and oh my goodness, you know, they created a separate lottery system, uh, the tribal lottery system for the tribal casinos and their offsite control. And they're just draconian about the state uh, gaming regulations in that system. I don't think the casinos in Washington have any control over the, you know, making it harder to win in the afternoon and easier to win in the morning. I don't think they have any control. That's the only state where I'm just like, I don't think so. Um, uh, hopefully, you know, other states will start <laughs> start making that kind of a setup. Uh, um, you know, you think Oklahoma, Oklahoma, you think you're bad because you don't have any winning, you know, any theoretical payouts limits and no return statistics. You just don't want to be in the state of Washington. Sorry, anybody who's in, in Washington. If you have a way to win there, I, I'm just befuddled by how strict and limiting everything is there. Um, but uh Let's quickly see if I'm missing anything here. Um, okay. Uh, okay. Oh, uh, Magpie Eleven says uh, she has a Mills, and Mills is a big name. It's like pre uh, Bollies. Uh, she says I, uh, they they have a Mills 1946 five cent slot machine. I probably have a picture of it. Um, uh, in my book, uh, and if you need a, you know, the paragraph description, you know, send me an email and I'll, I'll, I'll scan a copy for you. Um, and let's see. Oh, th thank you for saying that she, that you love, uh, 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 I, she says, no worries. I love this live stream. <laughs> um, yeah, I thought she said sin as well, uh, or she, he, I don't know. I'm sorry. Um, so Steve says, thanks. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, everybody have a good weekend. I, I completely agree. Lois and Dave. Yep. Um, and, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, okay. Um, Hey, wonderful everybody. Uh, we've jumped up to a bunch of participants. Thanks again for liking the video and I'll talk to you later. Have fun, be safe, make, uh, make good choices. Bye. Remember to visit professorslots.com slash subscribe to get my free report revealing the top seven online resources for improving your gambling performance, including the one I've used as a top tier slot machine casino gambler. This is the next segment of the show on slot machine casino gambling. Here, I provide a brief overview of the current state of gambling in a U.S. state, territory, or the federal district, emphasizing by far anything of interest to slot machine casino gamblers. Up next is Virginia slot machine casino gambling in 2020. Here goes. Virginia slot machine casino gambling does not exist yet. Last year, the state legislature and governor approved three new casinos, but each awaits approval by voters in their local municipalities. The minimum legal gambling age in Virginia depends upon the gambling activity. For land-based casinos, it's expected to be 21. For poker rooms, it's not available. And for bingo, the lottery, and parimutuel wagering, it's 18. On March 22, 2019, Virginia Governor Ralph Northam signed State Bill 1126 into law. This state law does not authorize casinos in Virginia. However, in effect, it establishes a commission to study casino gaming regulations, a framework for the lottery board to oversee gaming, and how eligible cities conduct a local casino approval referendum. Details of the state bill suggest eligible cities are Danville, Bristol, and Portsmouth. Regarding timing, the city of Bristol has scheduled their referendum for November 2020. Next up is a usually short statement about slot machine private ownership, which I have included in case you live in this U.S. state and are considering owning a slot machine. Here it is. In Virginia, it is legal to own a slot machine privately. The framework included in the 2019 passing of Virginia State Bill 1126 includes giving oversight of sports betting regulations to the Virginia Racing Commission. This expansion of its responsibilities is in addition to its current responsibilities overseeing horse race parimutuel wagering. The Virginia Lottery Board will obtain responsibility for casino gambling, but specific gaming regulations are not yet available. 
Establishing these gaming regulations is currently underway by Virginia's Joint Legislative and Review Commission. In this section, I'll discuss Virginia gambling establishments. There are currently no casinos with slot machines in Virginia. There are currently no commercial casinos in Virginia. However, three eligible cities may have casinos after approval by voters. The Bristol referendum occurs first in November 2020. These three potential casino locations include the cities of Danville, located 144 miles southwest of Richmond, near North Carolina. Bristol, located 113 miles northeast of Knoxville, near Tennessee. And Portsmouth, located 97 miles southeast of Richmond near Chesapeake. The Pamunkey Indian tribe gained federal recognition in 2015 and is pursuing establishing a tribal casino. They intend to have improved educational and employment opportunities to ensure the long-term success of the tribe. At this time, the tribe is searching for a suitable site for a casino resort located within Virginia. Potential sites for a tribal casino now include Richmond and Norfolk. Continual and effective opposition of tribal casinos in Virginia comes from the casino operator of MGM National Harbor in nearby Maryland. As an alternative to enjoying Virginia slot machine casino gambling, consider exploring casino options in a nearby state. Bordering Virginia is to the north, Maryland and the District of Columbia. To the east, the Atlantic Ocean. To the south, North Carolina and Tennessee. And to the west, Kentucky and West Virginia. To visit any of my articles on these U.S. states, simply visit ProfessorSlots.com followed by its two-letter postal designation. For example, my Maryland Slots article is available at ProfessorSlots.com slash md colonial downs racetrack offers slot like historic horse racing hhr electronic gaming machines this horse racing facility is in the eastern part of virginia located 30 miles east of richmond are you interested in sharing and learning with other slots enthusiasts in virginia if so join our virginia slots community on facebook at professorslots.com slash fb va all you'll need is a facebook profile to join this private facebook group freely There, you'll be able to privately share your slots experiences as well as chat with players about slots gambling in or near Virginia. Again, use this convenient link I've created to go directly to our group on Facebook, professorslots.com slash FBVA. Join us. As Virginia casinos await voter approvals, the state legislature is working to establish slot machine gaming regulations. Therefore, it is not yet known if Virginia will offer theoretical payout limits or return statistics. In summary, Virginia slot machine casino gambling does not exist but is now on the horizon. Commercial casinos are awaiting approval by voters in Bristol, Danville, and Portsmouth. Over the last year, there has been no change to the slots gaming industry in Virginia. However, potential changes are imminent. Remember to visit ProfessorSlots.com slash subscribe to get my free report revealing the top seven online resources for improving your gambling performance, including the one I've used as a top-tier slot machine casino gambler. Part one of the next episode of the Professor Slots podcast will include a live stream Q&A session on YouTube. Remember, my weekly Q&A session on YouTube is on Saturdays from noon until 1 p.m. Eastern time. Bring whatever slots questions you have and I'll do my best to answer them. An easy to remember link to my YouTube channel is youtube.com slash Professor Slots. Feel free to stop by anytime during my hour long Q&A session. Part two of the next episode of the Professor Slots podcast is another brief overview of the current state of gambling in a U.S. state, territory, or the federal district. Next time, I'll be talking to you about the great U.S. state of Washington. That's the end of another episode of the Professor Slots Podcast. Thanks so much for listening. Show notes for this episode are on my website at professorslots.com slash episode 109. I plan to have the next episode come out very soon for you where I'll have more amazing content for the show. Until the next episode, have fun, be safe, and make good choices. Bye.